In the time since you watched my video about the Honda Highness, Virat Kohli's won us another test series, Donald Trump managed to avoid impeachment, and Karthik started dyeing his hair. I've also had to start wearing spectacles, and in the meantime, Honda has launched this, the CB350 RS. Now, it's powered by the same engine, housed in the same frame, but it does feature a few significant changes, if Honda is to be believed. To find out just how true that is and what difference these changes make, we're going to be riding it today. So we're going to split this into two parts. The first is what Honda has done differently as a manufacturer. And the second is what difference these changes make to us as riders. To be fair, there are quite a few changes on the RS, but we're not entirely sure what to make of them. On the one hand, Honda has given you a sportier riding stance, more blacked out bits, a sleeker tail section, which push it into a cafe racer kind of zone. But then they've also thrown in a bash plate and fork gaiters and off-road rubber, which give it a scrambler vibe. The rear wheel is down from 18 to 17 inches and wrapped in a fatter 150 section tyre, but Honda snatched away Bluetooth connectivity and mobile phone charging. Other differences include redesigned side panels and a new tuck and roll seat. While the height remains the same at 800mm, the seat is now slightly wider, so shorter riders might just find it a bit more troublesome to get their feet down. The Highness's old-school heel and toe shifter has made way for a more modern toe-only shifter on the RS. If we put on our corporate caps for a moment and think about this from a cost to company point of view, there's less chrome bits, which should theoretically make this cheaper for Honda to manufacture. Similarly, the omission of Bluetooth and USB charging should help shave off some bucks for Honda. And the more conventional rear wheel should again make it more affordable. But Honda says no, because at 1,96,000, this is about 10 grand more expensive than the similarly equipped DLX variant of the Highness. I'm going to jump on board and find out why exactly. The ride is actually done more to highlight the similarities than the differences. You still get the same 348cc motor, a little flat at the bottom, but then it pulls quite cleanly and strongly. It's just about as quick as its more old-school sibling, only half a second separates them to 100 kph, and this is probably down to the 2 kilos that this bike has lost by virtue of its chopped fenders and smaller wheels. While this engine's laid-back power delivery felt quite natural on the easy-going highness, it begins to feel a little lethargic from the sportier saddle of the RS. This feeling is further amplified by the tall gearing that has remained unchanged from the Highness. Even something as simple as sprocketing changes would have gone a long way in making the RS seem like a livelier motorcycle better matched to its visual appeal. You also get the same excellent ride quality from the Highness, but handling is a bit of a different story. Honda says that the RS in this name tag stands for road sailing. And sailing sounds about right, because that fatter rear tyre has made this feel a little more heavy steering than the Highness. And don't be fooled by Honda's claims about a lower stance. Even though the wheel is smaller, it's got a tyre with a fatter sidewall, so the overall rolling circumference is actually larger here than on the Highness. The other biggest change is to the riding posture. It's slightly sportier, which means the bars are slightly further forwards and slightly lower down. The foot pegs have been moved by a greater margin, they're now more rear set and placed higher up. It's definitely not uncomfortable, this position, you can live with it on a daily basis. It just means that on the longer rides, you will start to get tired out a little bit earlier than the Highness. We actually wish Honda had been a little more drastic with changes to the ergonomics. We would have liked maybe a full-blown cafe racer with the front drop down and clip-on handlebars. That would solve the issue of front-end lightness that we saw on the Highness as well. Unfortunately, it's still quite prevalent even on this bike. So now that we know what Honda has done differently and what it's resulted in from a riding perspective, we come to the final piece of the puzzle, which is, who is this bike for? Well, it seems to me that the only reason why you or anyone else would buy this over a Highness is because you're a big fan of the way it looks. Because in terms of riding experience, you could get yourself a very similar, perhaps even slightly better riding experience for less money. Overall, the RS seems like a bit of a missed opportunity from Honda, because it could have used the capable foundations of the Highness to create a more well-defined motorcycle with a more unique identity that would appeal to a different set of buyers. Instead, they've taken this weird middle-of-the-road approach and that's resulted in a sort of confused bike that we find hard to recommend to people, especially considering its price premium.